Uh, it seemed like there was a lot of bad blood heading into this fight. Uh, did, did that amplify this matchup a little bit more? Uh, just because you haven't really had that with some of your past opponents. Well, I could say I was really trying to hurt him, but I was really trying to hurt everybody I fight. So about the same. Um, yeah, just, you know, I actually enjoy it when the people talk shit to me because then it, I don't feel bad about hurting them. So, uh, yeah, I kind of enjoy him talking shit. It really don't. I like it when a dude talks shit to me. It makes me feel better. And we heard the scorecards at the end. Uh, you know, twenty five for him, thirty for you. Uh, did, you know, were you expecting that type of a dominant performance in, uh, tonight? Of course, man. I'm I'm really biased. I always think I'm going to win everything. <laughs> And, and do you sort of have an idea of what's next for you? I know Dan Ige and you have some history. He's fighting Edson Barbosa. Would you want the winner of that fight? Uh, you know, it's really – I've never really picked my fights or called out nobody. I really don't care to. I like when people call me out. And uh, But, you know, it's really up to my management. He's going to uh, pick whatever he thinks I need to do. And that's that's what – you know, I pay him a lot of money. And that's what his job is to do is to tell me who to fight. <laughs> <laughs> and then last last one for me, how was it fighting without the, the empty crowd? Because I know you're a guy that really feeds off the crowd, and, and you know, how did, did that affect you at all in the fight? I really like fighting in that empty crowd. I mean, I wish we could every time. I can hear my coaches just plain as day, and it's just the, um, just the simplest things. You know, you sit there, and he, he there was one point he had a butterfly guard on me. Something happened. He rolls. He gets his butterfly guard back. I hear, oh, man, Willie. He says the four letter word, the P word, pass. And it just it comes back because when you're when you're there, the dude regards you, you're thinking posture, punch, you know, do this, do that, but then you you hear pass and your body just passes, you know, and and that's that's why I like being able to hear my coaches. That's why I like being able to hear um, what they got to say, because a lot of times what they say is the smartest thing for me to do because I'm thinking punch the shit out of this dude. I'm thinking punch him as hard as you can in the face. And then I hear the old man say pass. And so it makes me just think, oh, yeah, you know, he's right. You know, I better pass. And then I can punch him some more. And so I like hearing little things like that. And I like hearing Roly talk shit. And, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just, I really like that. I really like being able to hear my coaches the whole fight. I like being able to hear – Rose's coaches. I can hear Rose's coaches. And the best part about hearing Rose's coaches is they're telling him everything he needs to do. So I'm just sitting there blocking it. They're saying, hey, do this, do that, do that. And now I know exactly what he's trying to do. And so, you know, uh, I like being able to hear both coaches. I can hear his coaches and mine. I like that. Thank you, James. Next, we have Danny Segura from USA Today MMA Junkie. Bryce, uh, so did you did you prefer to fight with the crowd or, or without it? Like, how would you compare both experiences? Because it sounds like you had fun out there without the crowd. I prefer to fight without the crowd. Uh, mm -hmm. The reason being, I can hear my coaches and I can hear the opponent's coaches. And the, yeah. the opponent's coaches, when I, when I hear them panicking, <laughs> I know that I'm doing good, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. W would you say perhaps uh, you would have performed better without a crowd? Uh, I think that I do perform a little bit better. I can hear my coaches. I mean, I can remember tons of things my coaches said. And uh, I can remember one specifically that was during a fight. You know, old man told me to pass, and I, and I passed. And and I was just about to punch him. And it's probably good, you know, because I was sitting there in his butterfly guard, and I was just about to punch. And then Willie says, pass. And so then I went from wanting to punch him to wanting to pass. And then, sure enough, I get inside mount, I take mount, you know, and then – uh, just just rolled him out the whole time. Got my elbows in. I could hear Roly. I could hear TJ. So I like being able to hear my coaches. That's that's huge for me. Yeah. And this virus seems like it's gonna stick around for a bit. So we might not see crowds back in in venues for for quite a bit. Um, are you looking forward to that then? Um. Yeah. I don't know how. You know. By the time I fight again, there'll probably be crowds and stuff. Unless the whole world went to chaos or something, and then. You know, I'll be out catching catfish and skinning deer. <laughs> yeah. And you, you face, like, solid opposition in, in the UFC, and I know you don't like to call out, but uh, as far as a type of opponent, um, would you like to start facing people in the rankings or, or maybe bigger name uh, guys? Or, you know, you are 25 years old. Would you like to sort of take things low in, in, in your career here in the UFC? 
Man, it's really up to what my manager thinks because, uh, you know, I think he has the eyes inside and that's really his job is to pick the best fights for me to get me where he thinks I should be and I'm going to be. And, uh, you know, I've trusted my manager. That's what his job is. That's why I pay him is to uh, <clears throat> promote me and pick my fights. And that's what he does. And so I don't even worry about it. You know, it's just I got so much other shit to worry about. I got, yeah. I got a lot, a lot of shit to worry about. And, uh, you know, I pay him to worry about that. Yeah. And last one for me, I don't know if you caught this, but on the broadcast, I believe John Anik said that they're going to have the, the camo shorts for you. I don't know if, if somebody told you backstage. Oh, yeah. Dana White said that he's going to give me some camo shorts. So I think they just got tired of me talking shit <laughs> and they figured I'm not going to shut up. If he's going to give me my camo shorts, I'll shut up <laughs> and I'll shut up. <laughs> All right, man. Congrats on the win. Up, man. Next, we have Jay Anderson from Cage Side Press. Thanks very much, and uh, congratulations on the win, Brace. I mean, one thing is clear, the uh, your favorite game really is Twister. Um, you did it in D.C., you almost did it again tonight. Did you have, uh, you know, any sort of expectations trying to live up to that first one, or you just want to be the first guy to land two in a row? Man, I wanted to be the first guy to land two. I thought I was going to break his neck, man. But I think that neck surgery he had, I think he got an extra vertebrae in there now because his neck just didn't break. And, uh, you know, I just don't know why or how he didn't tap, but you got to give it to the guy. There's no denying the guy's tough. I swear to God, if there if there was rounds, we'd still be fighting right now. You know, it just, we just fight until I guess he just passed out from exhaustion. I don't know if I could choke him out. I don't know if I could twist him. Just sit on top of him until he fucking passed out, I guess. You know, we'd still be fighting. And, I mean, the other thing is, I mean, you did come close to the finish early. Uh, did you have the sense that he was close to tapping? No, he was not close to tapping. All right, definitely. I mean, they pointed out in the broadcast, but, uh, hey, different uh, different thing in a live fight. What is it about your ground game uh, when it comes right down to it? There's such such a difficulty for opponents because that was one of the more dominant performances we've seen in a while man you know you gotta cook them to the bone most of these people been simmered you know some of them been a little bit broiled some of them mean been baked but ain't none of them been cooked to the bone you get cooked to the bone you're done you don't come back from that <laughs>